This is I'm Suck, and in this video we are looking at the Western Rebellion, Ket's Rebellion, and the Fall of Somerset. So first of all, we need to look at the causes of rebellion in 1549. As for many historians, the year 1549 was the worst of the Tudor period. Now there were major rebellions in East Anglia and the Southwest, and the government were inefficient at dealing them with them. And there were many reasons for the rebellions in 1549, and these include the religious reasons due to the religious change that had been going on, and if you don't know about that, look at the previous video on the religious change in Edward VI's reign, the agrarian and social grievances in which there were reports of the uprooting of enclosures, and there was some resentment of taxation. Now this meant that there were riots around the country, and William Body was killed in Cornwall for attempting to remove Catholic statues, and in Somerset, mobs tore down fences and hedges that were erected to enclose pasture land. Now these riots were often ill-focused and led by the poorest classes, which meant that figures such as the Earl of Arundel was able to suppress the riots without too much difficulty. However, both the Western Rebellion and the Ketz Rebellion required significant military attention and were a problem for the government. So first of all, we will look at the Western Rebellion. As the Western Rebellion was predominantly a religious rebellion which arrived from Cornwall and Devon. And along with the introduction of the new prayer book, the rebels wanted a complete reversal of the religious reform implemented under Edward VI's reign. And the rebellion was also provoked by grievances over taxation. Now, labourers resented the sheep tax, which had been introduced in 1548, and saw the government in London as uncaring and ignorant. Now, the government had also implemented insensitive local officials. So, the rebels first congregated at Credition before marching past Exeter and setting up camp. Now, they had no intention of marching towards London, as instead they wanted to wait for the government to come to them. However, the news of rebellion was slow to reach Somerset, and when it did reach him, he underestimated the severity of the situation. Now, there were also troops in Scotland, and there was another protest taking place in the east of England, and this is the Ketz Rebellion, which we will look at in just a second. Now, even so, Lord Russell did begin his advance on the rebels on the 28th of July, and they were defeated at Clyst Heath on the 4th of August. Now, the final defeat of the rebels took place at Samford Courtenay on the 17th of August. But the simultaneous rebellion was the Ketz Rebellion. And the Ketz Rebellion did have a different motive, as it had a limited religious influence. Now, instead, the widespread economic and social problems were the main cause of this rebellion. And these problems included hatred of the local government officials, the failure of the government to stop enclosure, and the local maladministration. Now, Robert Kett was a landowner who had agreed to end enclosure on his land, and he agreed to lead the rebels in securing their rights. Now, Kett's rebellion followed a similar pattern to the Western Rebellion, as they didn't march towards London, yet they set up camp near Norwich. Now, here they ran a largely peaceful campaign to end enclosure, improve local government, and secure better clergymen. On the 21st of July, though, the rebels started firing on Norwich, and a day later, they had control of the city. Now, on the 1st of August, the Earl of Northampton failed to recapture the city, yet on the 27th of August, the rebels were finally defeated by forces led by the Earl of Warwick. Now, this suppression led to a combined total of 4,000 deaths, and Kett was convicted of high treason and hanged. So, in both of these rebellions, Somerset's response had been extremely slow, and even so, the rebellions had still not led to any change in policy on either religion or enclosure. Now, this did give Somerset's opposition an opportunity to strike. And on the 11th of October, Somerset was arrested on the orders of the council, and he was placed in the tower. Now, he was allowed to return into the Privy Council in February 1550, but after rumours of Somerset's plan to take back power started to circulate, however, he was tried on charges of treason and eventually executed in 1552. So, thank you for watching the video, and see you soon. Bye!